Do you know what this symbol means? And do you know how tiptoeing can help you remain hidden from a hunter for longer, even in the middle of a chase? Well after playing Identity 5 over 6 months, and after countless matches playing both as hunter and survivor, I have some tips and some information that I wish I had known when I had first started the game. Some of these tips even long time players of the game don't even know yet. So hey guys, I'm Black Phoenix, and I really struggled playing with Identity 5 when I first started. I had a lot of help from people from uh, within my stream when I was playing it, teaching me the different bit mechanics of the game and all the different characters and what they did, spending most of my matches on the floor or chaired. <coughs> that hasn't changed much. But after talking to players who've been playing this game for a long time, some of them with badges and some of them who are in the top 50 of certain characters, even top 10, I have learned some of the things that the game doesn't tell you outright. So let's get straight into the tips. Did you know that tiptoeing can help prevent a hunter from finding you? When you're running around the map, you actually leave an invisible trail that is invisible to you but visible to the hunter. This is like a red patchwork mark on the floor that I would assume is blood, but uh, the hunter can see it and can follow those tracks. They do disappear after a certain period of time, but the hunter can follow those tracks and find you and where you're going. One way of mitigating this problem, especially when the hunter is nearby, is by tiptoeing, also called walking or crawling. By doing this, you don't leave any marks behind you. And you can use this just to make to throw the hunter off a little bit. Another little tip connected to this is the fact that when you vault over a window or a pallet, the hunter actually gets an alert in the direction of where you vaulted. This can be a problem if you're trying to just move around the map quickly and you don't want to alert the hunter of your position. So if you tiptoe right before going in over a window, it actually silently vaults the window. One mistake that even veterans at this game still do is cancelling stun animations. It is very tempting to hit a hunter with a flare gun after just having stunned them with a pallet or after your friend just stunned them, but don't do this, please just wait. Stuns in this game do not stack. Let me give you an example. You just pallet stun a hunter. You have a flare gun. The couple of seconds that that hunter is out of action because he's been stunned is let's say a couple of seconds. But if you cut, shoot him with a flare gun, you're actually cutting and instantly stopping that flare gun stun. Then you're starting the flare gun stun. If whilst he is in the pallet stun animation, you shoot him with a flare gun, you're actually stopping the pallet stun's um, timer and you're starting the flare gun's timer. So you're, you're using less time of the hunter being out of action. So make sure that you wait until after the animation is finished before you stun. The same can be said for someone like Enchantress who would triple stun the hunter that is uh, the same length more or less as a coordinator stun. But if you then use some other type of short stun, for example a prisoner stun, the Enchantress stun gets stopped and the prisoner stun is what happens. So instead of having a very long stun that's a couple, maybe 5-10 seconds, instead it's been cut to like 1 second. So wait for the animation to end, then stun. Cypher machines sometimes take a long time to decode, or at least it feels like it. And when, when you're playing as a hunter, it feels like the ciphers are going by too quickly and you can't stop it. Well, a cipher usually takes 75 seconds to decode from 0 to 100%. This can change depending on if you are a decoder, certain characters that are designed for decoding. For example, we have Lawyer, who has a 20% decoding speed boost after completing a cipher. This would cut the time for, for him to complete the next cipher from 75 seconds to 60 seconds. On the other side, flipping the coin, we have rescuers who actually have a longer time to decode. For example, Mercenary, who has a 25% slower decoding speed, bringing his total decode time for a whole cipher up to 94 seconds. There are different persona webs that you can take that will help you decode faster in certain situations, so I will talk about persona webs a little bit later on in this video. Another important piece of information about ciphers that they don't tell you is that cipher machines actually start to visibly wiggle after around 30%, only when you're touching them though. Hunters can actually see this wiggling from anywhere on the map 
and they can tell that someone's decoding. Sometimes you don't understand how a hunter found you when you're decoding on the other side of the map, it's because your cipher was wiggling. This can be a, a very, very important thing, and especially when I'm a hunter, I really do look out for these cipher wiggles, so I can make sure I'm going in the right direction, and I can even know which last cipher everyone's working on. The Persona Web can be a bit daunting for new players, and it definitely is still even to me. But the Persona Web really does define how each match will play out and how each character plays. It is really worth you reading through each node from the Persona Web and understanding and thinking about what your favorite character and survivor or hunter does and applying that idea to how you play this person, seeing if there are better abilities for you or worse abilities for you. One tip that I can give you is if you are a rescuer, usually they go all the way down south, six o'clock, to Tide Turner. And if you are a and if you are a decoder, usually because they don't have self-defense, people will go for broken windows to be able to dash away from the hunter faster. Exit path, sticker, and borrowed time are a necessity in almost every single match. These will help you get back up even when you've been knocked down. Ah, Dream Witch and Photographer. Some of my favorite hunters to play. But when I first started playing, I really had no idea what was going on when I had pink followers attacking me, non-pink followers attacking me. I didn't understand what was happening. When I had heartbeat and then no heartbeat, then heartbeat, then no heartbeat. Or when photographer would terror shock you in the middle of nowhere. One second you're fine, the next you're down. Well, let me do my best to explain these hunters so that you can understand them better and be prepared for the for a match with them that you may have or may not have. Dream Witch is probably the most difficult hunter to understand and probably the second most difficult hunter to play after Mad Eyes, possibly. Although you can't see it, at the beginning of a match when you're playing against a Dream Witch, there are actually two hunters that spawn. The follower that you can see with the weapon and also the main body, the snake body, that is Dream Witch. Dream Witch is invisible to all the survivors and she can move around all the whole map without making any noise or any sound and without any heartbeat. The follower will always follow the main body and, sh and, the, hun and the player can actually swap between the main body or the follower. The main body's job is to actually m create more followers that attach to each of the survivors that, they, that Dream Witch curses. These followers cannot attack of their own, but they will follow the survivor that they are attached to if that, if that survivor gets within a certain range of it. The player can then swap between the main body and any of the followers that they've created every couple of seconds. This means that Dream Witch has a very big map control, so you need to be careful. There is only heartbeat when she swaps to one of those followers. As for Photographer, he's a little bit easier to understand. There are little cameras all over the map, and if he goes up to one of these cameras, he can take a picture. You can go inside of the picture world, and in this photo world, you can actually find all of the copies of each survivor where they were standing at the moment he took the picture. Photographer can actually hit these copies of, of the survivors and even chair them. At the end of the photo world, the damage that the copies took will be transferred to the actual survivor but only half of the damage. So for example, if you were chaired in the photo world, then you will actually be knocked down in the real world. The photographer can also transfer between the worlds once he has enough presence and he can do it instantly. So he can pop out at any, at any moment, anywhere without any heartbeat. A tip connected to hunters is to make sure that you understand that each hunter really does have a weakness. I know that they're very difficult and they seem impossible to beat at the beginning, but each hunter does have a weakness. Some hunters are long distance attack hunters, some of them are more short distance hunters. For example, talking about photographer. Photographer is very weak to cipher rush. If you can decode really, really quickly and you decode in the photo world, you can actually maintain some of the progress that you did on the cipher machines and you can also prevent yourself from being terror shocked since you are inside the mirror world for hunter like for a hunter like ripper if you're if you are kiting also known as running away from the hunter and you're watching behind yourself you can actually see him prepare his attack and you can sidestep his foggy blades so my recommendation is that you go and ask somebody who's been playing this game for a while about uh, what each hunter's weakness is and how you can implement those in a real match. If you want to speak to someone who knows about this game, come over to my stream, I stream on Twitch, and come and have a look in my chat and talk to some people who've been playing this game since the beginning or who've got really high 
rankings in this game. They're always happy to help and they, they love teaching beginners and newer people to the game how to improve their gameplay. So the link to my Twitch will be in the description. Come and say hi. Something that I learned recently is this. What does this mean? Well, it's actually interesting. When you've got red around your name, it means that you've already been chaired. And this is not a essential indicator, but it's very useful because especially for me, when I'm playing on stream, I really can't pay attention to who's being chaired and who's not being chaired. And if I've been chaired or not been chaired, sometimes I forget. So to have this little red indicator to show that someone has been chaired can help me a little bit in the game. And this can also help you. And do you know what this symbol means? If you guessed Wanted Order, well, you deserve a prize. Wanted Order is an ability that a hunter can have from their Persona web. Once you have this red marker around you, it means that they can see you. All these little symbols that you can see at the top left of your screen are different things that are affecting your gameplay. The blue ones are, are either your abilities or what your, your team is giving you, different buffs and sometimes decreases. And these red ones over here, they are the how the hunter is affecting you, sometimes slower decoding and such. Bonus tip. Don't tell anyone there was a bonus tip. Did you know that on every map, there is actually different spawn points? You're not randomly placed into a place on the map. And the hunters and survivors can actually memorize these spawn points on each map and know where everyone's going to be at this beginning of the game. There are also specific places for the dungeon to be found, the little hatch that lets you escape. So learning the places where it could be can help you if you're about to if you really need to escape at the end of the match you can find all the spawn points information in game just here and there is a great website that i'll leave the link in the description as to where you can see all the pictures of where all the spawn points are if you don't want to go in game now i hope these tips really helped you and gave you a knowledge boost over some other people who has just started playing the game now remember to give this video a like if you liked it and please subscribe if you're interested in any other Identity 5 videos or gaming game gaming videos in, in general. I'm doing my best to give you tip videos and uh, if you want to watch a video on specific tips on specific survivors, there will be a video somewhere here. Take care guys, bye bye.